Lisa, I knew you were going to be hot. <laughs> It's been in the 30s on the outside, and I sleep at night with just a little bitty tiny sheet on it. Uh -huh. Can't take all that, that heat and that color. Too much to sleep. <clears throat> so God bless you. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8 says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Here right at the end of the church age is no time to become faint and weary. Amen. No, Amen. it's not. No, don't. Get it's time it. for us to draw closer and closer to God. As He approaches us, as a truth. The Amplified version of that same scripture says, "Do not deceive yourselves." Amen. It's a terrible way to deceive yourself. Amen. Into believing something that's not really true. He says, do not deceive yourselves. No one makes a fool of God. No, sir. That's what the Amplified Version, the King James Version says, God is not mocked. But the Amplified says, no man makes a fool of God. People will reap exactly what they sow. If you reap if you sow to the wind, you know, the Bible says you're going to reap what? The world. The world. The world. Yeah. That's my neighbor. It's coming back up, folks. Yes, sir. Absolutely, Pastor. He says here that they sow in the field of their natural desires. Not necessarily paying attention to what the Word says. There's an old, I don't know if it was Cliff Wilson who said it. And if it feels good, do it. Wow. Yep. That's, that's a terminology today that is still wrongly used in our nation. For he said, if they gather the harvest of death, if they sow in the end of the Spirit, <clears throat> from the Spirit that they will gather the harvest of eternal life. He says, so let us not become tired of doing good. That's Amen. right. Keep doing good. Amen. That's what the Amplified Version says. Let us not grow tired of doing good. For if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. That's the truth, Pastor. It amazes me with these sugarcane farmers. One day you see them cutting cane, and the next day you see them right back in that same place, plowing and, and laying fresh cane back in that so they can get another crop. If they don't sow yes. now, they won't reap anything Amen. come September, October. Amen. We have to sow. In Luke chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, he says, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees. Yes, sir. Which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Amplified further says, Watch yourselves carefully. Yes, sir. Watch yourselves carefully Amen. so you don't get contaminated with Pharisees' yeast. That's the truth. You can't keep your true self hidden forever. No, sir. Before all, you'll be exposed. Yes, sir. You can't hide behind a religious mask. No. Forever. No, sir. Sooner or later, the mask will slip in your true face will be made known. That's the truth. 
I want to talk to us next two or three weeks, probably to take that long to finish this, on the hidden cost of sin. Come on, Pastor. Sin costs us. Big time. It really does. Yes, sir. It takes us further than we wanted to go. That's the truth. It keeps us longer than we wanted to stay. Amen. It costs us more than we wanted to pay. Tell the pastor. You see, the nature of sin, sin is primarily a wrong relationship with God. That's what sin is. Amen. Amen. It's a wrong relationship with God, which may express itself in wrong attitudes, wrong actions toward God Himself, or toward other human beings. Come on now. Scripture stressed that the condition is deeply rooted in human nature. Amen. And that only God is able to break its penalty and its power. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Every one of us was born into sin. Right. Yes, sir. We were. Absolutely. We actually have a sinful nature. That's the truth. You don't have to teach children how to steal. No, sir. It just comes natural. It may be a cookie. It may be a, a candy that Mama had in there and said you can't have. Tell the pastor. <laughs> I was telling Brother Joy, his little boy knows that they don't want him up on this platform. And I'm watching him Sunday night. They were praying. And he got up and his mom walked this way to pray. And and he stood there a little while and he watched them. Saw him going that way and he took off and he walked real slow and he got to the corner of this platform. And he took off running. <laughs> and under those steps he was coming. Just when he was about to get up there and a smile on his face, his dad picked him up and said, no, no, no. <laughs> Nobody ever trained him to do that. He just knows what he wants. Yes, yeah, sir. He wants to get up there and bat. Amen. And he watches. Amen. He's a lot like other children. They just, it's in their nature. It's in human beings' nature. Right. Why do we always want something we know we're not supposed to have? Right. That's the truth, Pastor. Teach it. Always want something we're not supposed to have. Amen. That is the nature of sin. That's true. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it's just a step. It's, it's just a step over the line. And then see if God speaks to get us. Wow. And if you don't chastise us, or somebody don't come and say, you know, you should be doing that, we'll step another step over. And we look, and now we're two steps away from the line. And all of a sudden, somebody's like, oh, we don't do that. And we, we get back over, we get back where we need to be. There's a hidden cost to sin. Yeah. Come on now. In 1 John 3 and 4, let's read. Whosoever commits sin, sin transgresses also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. He says, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law of God. Right. He said, for sin is the transgression of the law. All right. Sin is the breaking of the law. My God, Jesus. We get to talking sometimes when we're driving down the road. I heard Brother Zeus say, no, look down pastor, I'm going to set you off. You just, you get busy and, and you don't watch it. My truck, brother, no, I have to watch that truck. Matter of fact, I got it set where it can't do over 75. <laughs> I said it that way. I almost got a ticket. And I told the guys when I first bought it, and I said, sir, on it, I didn't realize. I said, it rides smooth, and, and I didn't notice. He said, well, you were doing 85. Oh. I said, it didn't feel like it. I said, you can turn the wheel loose, and it runs just as straight. Let me see your, your time. I had a bill selling there, and he looked at it. He 
That's what you did it yesterday. You ain't had it in a week yet. I said, this is the first time I'm out on the road with it. He said, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to give you a warning. Wow. In my mind, you could turn that key and you could set the maximum mileage at 75 is as high as it'll go. Sometimes I get aggravated. I'm pulling that big trailer and I'm going down the road and I need to speed up and get around a truck or something. And it won't but I said, I'm not going to get a ticket. If I go 75 and I'm 55, I'm transgressing the law. Amen. Yeah. Oh, wow. Anybody ever got a ticket? Amen. I mean, I'm amazed. I've never had to do it before. In Psalms 19 and 13, he says, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. David's praying here. Up there. He back thy servant also for presumptuous sin. What are presumptuous sins? The ones you don't even know. You don't even know you committed. You messed up and you get caught and didn't even realize. That's why he said, study the word. David said, I've hid the word of God inside of me that I sin not against God. We need to get that word on the inside of us. It's not enough to, to maybe read three Bible chapters a day and at the end of the year around a whole. How many of you have done that in the next year when you go to read it, you find something new? Amen. Yeah. You read it right over and didn't catch it. It never gets old. David said, Lord, keep me from presumptuous sins. Sins that I'm not even aware that I was doing. He said, so that I shall be innocent from the grave transgression. That got me curious. I thought a transgression was a transgression. But he said, keep me back. Yeah. And I'll be innocent from the grave right, man. transgression. You get a chance, do a Bible study on that search. Do the Bible. About that great transgression. All right. The Bible says the only sin that God will not forgive is what? Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. That is a great transgression. Because when you do that, there's no remission from that. And David said, keep me, Lord. Yeah. Keep me from those results of sin. Keep me, Lord. Let them not have dominion over me. No. It's a terrible way to be a blood all child of God and a sin has dominion over you. Yeah. Come on. Then shall I be upright, he said, and I shall be innocent of the great transgression. In Leviticus chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Listen closely to what he says the writer here in the letters. And if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist it not, yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. He has certainly trespassed against the Lord. Why are you spending so much time with me? Lord? I'm trying to help us get ready. Yes. For the rapture. For his arrival. He's coming for us. We have got to examine ourselves. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to have to say, Lord, turn the search light of heaven. Every day of my life. I want you to shine over me, over my soul, yes. over my body. And God, if there's anything there that would hinder me from making it in the rapture, We have got to understand. We've got to understand. Do it, God. He said, if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done Do it, by the commandments of the Lord, though he wished it not, yet is he guilty. And he has certainly trespassed against the Lord. In 
Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. He says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. I got into a long discussion sir, with that yesterday. The guy told me, he said, Do you really think you got to forgive everybody that's done you wrong? Yeah. I absolutely with every part of my being. He said, I'll forgive them. But he said, I don't want to be around them. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to see them. I said, you won't. Or I said, you will see them because I said, you're going to go to the same place they're going. Yes. There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Right. That's right. And carrying a grudge and carrying hatred on the inside of us is sin. Yes. It is sin. Right. And we've got to be willing to forgive and forget. Yes, sir. Trespasses is a separation. It's a wedge that drives down. When we were young, we, we had a fireplace. We were burning fireplace. That was our heat. And we would cut all summer long. We'd go in there and cut them trees. We'd cut them up in about two foot blocks. Load them up, take them home, dump them in the lane, and then we'd get out of here called brother of the day, I mean, split the wood, all that. I said, with your lane? Messed up like it is. He said, I sat in a chair. He said, I rolled, he's a hired little guy from down the road, and he rolls in the box over there, and turns it up, and puts them under my box. He said, I push a button, it comes down, and he separates it. He puts it back up there, I push a button, and he said, it separates it. But when we were coming up, I told him, I'll never own a fireplace. Because <laughs> after we worked all day long in those woods cutting lumber and, and cutting those trees and cutting up in little two foot blocks, and, and we got them home, you went through with it. Nope. And said, so, My God's over, boys. Get you a axe, get you a hammer, a big a sledgehammer, and a wedge. Go split wood.
put it up there and I went to put the lens on and one of the screws was missing. Oh no. I said, I want to take it. Oh no, you got it all hooked up. It looks so pretty. Just leave it and go get another screw. <laughs> so today I went to Lowe's and got another screw. And the guy says, every once in a while we have people come back looking for screws. He said, I think they're lying. I think they just, I said, well, I promise you I ain't lying. I said, I'm the one that put the line up. I'm the one that went to put the lens up there and it was one screw and it takes two. Well, I wasn't saying you were lying. I said, well, you said some people do. I said, I sure they do. I promise you. I said, if you want, I'll go get the whole thing. I said, it's in Lake Charles. I'll tear it all apart and bring it. No, no, we ain't going to go that far. He says, not everyone that say the poor Lord shall be the Lord in the heaven, but what? He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. I want to do your will. His will is more than just breaking laws. We can be without sin. We can have pray through and got the Holy Ghost, but if we're not doing His will, His mom and daddy sisters, they know they didn't understand Mary and Joseph didn't understand. They said, why did you run off? He said, don't you know I had to be about my father's business? Preacher, uh, I can imagine all the naysayers. Oh, God, Joseph made his day. <laughs> Joseph even had a problem with that until the Lord met with him and he says, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And he said, And them will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And iniquity is what? Sin. It's sin. Disobedience is sin. That's a true. It's a dangerous thing to know what we're supposed to do and not do it. It's dangerous. I had a guy using the Lord's name in vain. He was over working in that trailer park for Brother Seth and Sister Sonny trying to get them in a house. And there was a guy out there in every other word. He was taking the Lord's name in vain. And I, and I just tried to ignore it as much as I could. But Brother Zeno, know it got all over. She said, I'm going to get beat to death one of these days. And I walked out there and said, Hey, buddy, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing fine. I said, You're in danger. Danger of what? I said the wrath of God. That's the truth. What are you talking about? I said every other word is GD, GD, GD. I said you're using God's name in vain. You don't like it. God don't like it. He looked at me and had an old cigar in his mouth. He said, well, I'm just a stupid sinner. I don't know about it. I said, you do that? Yes, you do. I said, I've mentioned it to you. You're taking the name of the Lord in vain. That's, that's not good. He said, are you a preacher? I said, yes, sir. He said, pray for me. Amen. My daddy does like it. My grandpa does like it. And he said, I, I just picked it up. It's just my natural vocabulary. I said, well, you need to try to change it. That's yeah. for sure. He was from Cary Pro. Oh, God. <laughs> He's not a Cajun, man. We cuss. Oh. We drink. I chase women. He said, that ain't the worst thing. You said it's vain. I said, it's bad. It's iniquity. Yes, sir. That's right. In Romans 3 and 23, he says, all have sinned. That's right. And come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. It's death. Always dead. Everybody that works on a public job, I used to couldn't wait. We got paid every two weeks and I couldn't wait till that Friday. That's a fact. It's usually by that Friday I was broke. <laughs> the wallet was there. I go home, tells us we're get ready, we're gonna go eat somewhere. We'll treat you. 
No, it wasn't no once a month. <laughs> and it progressively got worse. My first wife has diabetes. She eats at eight, twelve, four, and then before she goes to bed again. Not my husband, too. It's in her brain. I told her, I'll be working. She'll call me, where you at? So cut the grass over here. What you got? You know it's almost 12. <laughs> I said, I'm out there by the water bill. I said, it'll be a quarter of one time to get there. She better get in there and pull something out and cook. Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death, but the, but the gift of God, of God is what? Eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You see, sin, this is a concept most commonly found in the Old Testament and the New Testament to describe sin. Amen. Sin signifies missing the mark. My Jesus. Missing the mark. Even if it were possible for us to not to commit sinful acts, we still have a sinful nature by birth. Amen. We are sinners yeah. saved by oh, the saved grace of God. God. That's the truth, Pastor Priest. I get up in the morning and I wish to head out. I said, Lord, cover me with your grace. Yes. I just need it. Cover me with your grace. I need it today, Lord. Let my mind think on righteous things yes, and not evil. I need it. Because of the penalty of sin is an eternity of separation from God. I want to be with you. I don't want to go a day without you. No, no. I'll be honest. Not one second. That's why I pray every morning. I, 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 I say I wake to God up and He wakes me up. That's a fact. I spend time with him every morning. Yes, sir. We pray for every person that's associated with this church. That's a fact. So yes, Lord, guard us today. Dispatch right. angels around. Put a hedge around them. Lord. Don't let sin get to them today. Put a shield around them, Lord. But I pray for me first. Yes. For me and my family. Paul oh, said, I fear after having preached to others. I myself yeah. should become a castle. reject. You see, hell translated from the Greek word Gehenna, which meant the valley of Henna. In this valley south of Jerusalem, the ancient Canaanites once sacrificed their children to the fire god Molech. Whoa. We said, that's so gross, but we've had missionaries come here. I, I think it was Brother Philkins that came here, and he said he was preaching a revival. And he said, this lady had a beautiful, beautiful baby in her arms and had a little, no, it was a baby that was a beautiful little girl. She was holding her hand. She had a baby that was nursing. And that baby had a twisted leg. He said, that woman walked out across the bridge in that village and said, there were crocodiles down below. That's what they worshiped, the crocodile god. And that woman took that baby and she said, I won't offer this baby to this crocodile God because his leg is twisted. And she took that little girl and swung her over the edge of the bridge who didn't have a blue shoulder. She wanted to give her a crocodile God the very best. We panic about that. And we should. That's right. We should. Amen. But these people would take their children to a fire God, Molech, and offer that child up as a sacrifice mm -hmm. to that God. Mm -hmm. In Tanzania, Nia, Africa, the missionary said there, he said, you go back into some remote parts of Africa. He said, and they've never even seen anybody except them themselves. That's and, true. and he said, those people, when you walk into that clearing, they're out there dancing and worshiping. He said, worship is just inside. And it is. It's inside of everyone. That's true, Bob. It's just an innate thing that we want to worship. Oh, the thing is, we don't always worship God. 
We might worship our house. We might worship our car. We might worship our children. God gave us those children. That's right. Yes. Amen. He gave us those children to parent them. Right. To train them up in the way that they should grow. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. But there are millions of parents across the country that never take their children to church. They never teach them about God. They don't have any idea who Jesus is. It's a sad day. Even Ahaz and Manasseh, kings of Judah, were guilty of this idolatrous practice of sacrificing their children. Jesus. King Josiah later defiled this valley, maybe get the city garbage dump so these sacrifices could never happen again. Right. To consume the garbage, fires burn constantly. History says maggots worked in that building. Ooh. I know some people scare roaches. <laughs> yeah, she is. I am too. I know Brother Kip. Definitely friend. One drop down, we was working in a house, and one drop down on him, and I, I thought he was having a Holy Ghost fit. I mean, he was just, I mean, he was dancing and hollering and screaming. Praise God. Lord bless him. He said, don't panic. He said, a roach was coming. <laughs> Amen. From word of man, Sister Perkins and Sister Audrey, they were both, one was in the love seat and one was in the couch. And they're standing there screaming, ah, ah, ah. I said, what on earth is wrong? They said, I'm bouncing. House and two grown women was having a heart attack. Amen. <laughs> they shared the mouse more than they shared them. <laughs> when the wind blew from the valley of Hinnom, from that direction, the stench was unbearable. I was raised out in the country about 10 or 12 miles away, we had a paper mill. Anybody ever been around a paper mill? Yes. Yes. When I was going to college, I worked there in the summertime. And when I come in, my mama would make me take my clothes off outside and leave them. And she'd put them in an old wash tub. We had a washing machine. She said, that would never go in my washing machine. I mean, the stench is unbearable. That's a fact. You don't make this bed. I took her clothes bed. And when I work, I put clothes bed on my nose. That stench of those chemicals and that ground up pulp of that wood. Jesus said hell was a place where the worm would not die and the fire would not be quenched. He said there would be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. In effect, he was saying, if you want to know what hell is like, look at Gehenna. All right, good example. Seek yeah. your 18 and 20. And I hurry. Seek your 18 and 20. Says the soul that sinneth. It shall not. And notice, he didn't say the soul that sins. But he put ETH on it. So that sinner, that means continually, continually, keep falling over the same thing over and over and over. He said, "He, the soul that sinner, it shall die. The soul will die. It'll become so carnal. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son." The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Next verse. Him. Revelation 20 and 15, he said, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life. Whoever was not found written in the book of life was none of what? Cast into the lake of fire. The fire. Church hell is real. Amen. It's real. It's real. That's the truth. 
truth. And Jesus talked more about it than anyone. On average, hell is talked about almost once per chapter in the New Testament. There's 264 chapters. Hell mentioned 234 times just in the New Testament. If God puts so much attention on something, it is something we need to pay Amen. attention to. Yes. More than anything. Matthew 5 and 29 says, so if your eye, even if it's your good eye, I'm reading from the Apple Bible version. He sure has it. Get the right eye for you and do what? Plug it out. And cast it for something. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast in the hell. He said, if you're right in hand, you cut it off. All right. It's better to go to hell, man, That's the truth. than to go to hell as a whole. That's true. I'll just read it down to my verse. So he says, so if your eye, even if it's your good eye, causes you to lust, causes you to gouge, he said, Gouge it out and throw it away. Amen. For it's better for you to lose one part of your body. That's right. And your whole body to be thrown into hell. That's the truth, Pastor. Right. I believe. If your hand, even That's if it's right. your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off yes. and throw it away. Amen. It's better for you to lose one part of your body and your whole body That's true. to be thrown That's right. into hell. There is a hidden cost. Or you do it. If you sit there and think about it and intentionally do it, Thank good. you're in danger. You're in danger. Yeah. Lord Jesus. We're in danger. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27 and 28 says, Can a man sleep fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on my clothes? Without his feet being scorched. If you play with fire, you will be burned. Amen. Yes. Believe me. Well, I was just a little bitty boy. I was raking. I had leaves piled up. There was some old never want to feel that again. rocks, pieces of cement. Never again. I had it all in a pile and I set it on fire. I was going to burn it and then I picked the cement stuff up. And I kept telling you, don't play with that. It's hot.
She told her baby, don't bring that guy. That guy is in love. She said, baby, you don't go to church. He drinks bad. He fools with drugs. You're going to have a hard life, baby. It is true that sin results in punishment in eternity. Amen. My Lord. The Bible says the rich man died and went to hell. And Lazarus died and went to heaven. And the scripture says that the rich man cried out in torment from hell. Father Abraham said I had sent Lazarus over here with a drop of water that he could cool my parched the Lord told him, he said, Lazarus can't come to you. You can't come to him. And you can't come to where he is. Right. He said, then send Lazarus to my brothers who still live. Let him warn them and tell them that I said, don't come to hell. That's the truth. The Lord said, if they wouldn't believe the prophets. That's right. What makes you think they'll believe a man coming from the dead? It's also true that sin contains punishment within itself right now. Sin brings pain and punishment right now. That's right. In Paul's condemnation, in Paul's condemnation of the Romans, homosexual acts, he exposes this principle. Sin has consequences in our own bodies. Amen. We don't hear a whole lot of AIDS anymore. But thousands and thousands and thousands of people died with AIDS 30 years ago. That's the truth. <clears throat> Amen. Romans 1 and 27, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of of a woman burned in their own lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. They received AIDS. Dirty needles contracted AIDS. Sin costs a lot. That's the truth. He costs us a lot. Amen. I saw my mom standing in the casket of my oldest brother and wept uncontrollably. My Lord. As he had walked away from God. My oldest brother was a millionaire when he died. He had anything money could buy. He was miserable every day of his life. It's a fact. His daughter died, and his son died. His wife died. The last thing he told me when I, the last time I saw him alive, he said, Ronnie, money ain't everything, son. He said, Brother Lee is gone. Johnny Earl's gone, Diane's gone. And here I am, an old man, purpled up, with plenty of money and nowhere to go. That's sad. He had one son left. And I dare say I doubt that money lasted five years. <coughs> and he was broke. He drove keen ranch trucks. $80,000 trucks. He had tons of friends because he had money. Yeah. He'd go to the bar and he said, Drinks for everybody, folks. Mm -hmm. Just beer, all oh, whatever they want, it's on me. I'll pay the tab. And once he lost all the money, or none of 
know he lives kind of like a person on the street. Somebody who had lots and lots of money. Money is not everything. The joy of the Holy Ghost. It can't be purchased with money. No, sir. God bless you, Miss Amy. We see through a high price. We, see. we love and appreciate you. Please be much in prayer for each other. Those that we had prayer for tonight, please put on your prayer this prayer day for until God gets us back into the house of the Lord. Let's just make up our mind. Amen. God bless you for this.